Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Friday, September 22nd, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here. This is the biggest policy, and, and I've been shouting it from the rooftops for, for ever since before they even started with this. I knew how it would play out. Biggest policy error ever. This rapid tightening cycle. It's going to bring the house of cards down. They've moved so deep into it now, and they're still they're still into it. They're still wanting more. It says Fed officials warn rates may rise again and stay higher for longer in this so-called fight against inflation. It says the Federal Reserve officials offered new warnings on Friday that they could raise interest rates again and hold them at higher levels for longer to return inflation to the central bank's 2% target. They're going to create an unprecedented... It's going to come suddenly when it happens. Everything's going to be fine on the day before it happens. Or the week before it happens. And then everything's not going to be fine. Because it's a delayed reaction from the this ra very rapid tightening schedule. And they want to do more. Talking about more. They're not gonna they're not they're gonna backtrack on all this and history's gonna show what a big mistake this is. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we got more to talk about today. It has a Fed F star star up have they this is the question in the thing as federal reserve what a mess they've made it says markets were a bit unsure what the decision would be from the federal reserve looking at monetary policy history they would have seemed wise to pause interest rate increases uh, looking at the u.s bond market with it deeply inverted this has typically been a sign of over tightening by the federal reserve yeah, they're way into over-tightening territory right now. The two-year and ten-year spread is its most negative since 1970. And previous bouts of yield inversion have preceded financial problems. This could be more than a problem. This could be a global credit freeze. Almost happened in 2008. This is what really frightened them. Somehow now they're not frightened anymore. And, and it's another thing, too. You know, they used used to be out there, they used to be frightened of nuclear war. Now they don't even talk about it and they're not frightened of it anymore. They're, they're, they're doing all the things required to lead us into a conflict between East and West that could result in it getting out of control. Spiraling out of control. It's like they're not frightened anymore. It's like it's like something's happened to people's brains. Evidently, the disease. We are diseased now, by the way. We're a diseased species. Something's been introduced into our species that wasn't there before 2020. It's not gone away. In fact, in, in most people, a lot of people probably have it, don't even know they have it because it's something called uh, it's something called asymptomatic, and it might be coming and going, and you don't even know it. Feel fine right through it, and then you get better again, and later somebody coughs on you, and you might have a couple days where you got a little bit of diarrhea or something, and you don't don't equate it to being what it is. We're a diseased species. It's endemic. It's pretty much replaced the head cold and flu. It's endemic. And what does it do to your brain? Maybe this is what's happened. Maybe it's some sort of a... Maybe people are a little bit nutty or something. Maybe that's why they're not frightened of nuclear war anymore, really. At least the ones in charge. 
Maybe they all calm each other. Maybe they talk to each other and say, Oh, it ain't gonna ever happen. Don't worry. Tease, tease the East all you want. <laughs> I, I just don't know. All I know is the world's gone a little bit nutty right now. A little bit. I mean, that's an understatement. But anyway, is this the biggest, most horrible financial crisis could occur from this, what the Fed's done? And it's called a credit freeze, worldwide credit freeze. And you're saying, well, what does that mean? What does it mean? It means, first off, the banks decide they're not going to lend money to each other. They freeze all credit and assets because they are unsure about their own condition. And then they then at that point, when they freeze credit to each other, they freeze credit to all of you guys. And what you don't realize is everything you do every day, if it's on a card, you know those little plastic cards you carry in your wallet, even the debit ones, because you're considered an unsecured lender to the bank, that money is considered credit. They say credit to your account. You know, you say, well, that money's mine. No, it's not yours. It belongs to the bank. And so when they cancel credit, they cancel everything. You can't, they will limit you. What they'll do is to try to pacify the people. If there's a credit freeze, they will limit people. They'll say, okay, you can take, say, $200 a week out of your account. Maximum withdrawal. And then there's a panic. Everybody runs into the ATM machines to get their 200 bucks. And you've seen this in other countries. Big long lines to the ATM machines. It could come here. And you only get so much a, a week or whatever. They, they, they draw up the rules even though it's your money. And they've already drawn up the rules even though it's your money. Go into the bank right now and try to take out 10, 10K out of the bank. <laughs> See what happens. Say, I want cash to the teller. And, and what they'll tell you is, 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 is they'll want to know, well, first off, why they're going to ask you. Now, it's your money, and they're going to ask you, why do you want it? That's the first thing they're going to ask you. Why do you want that big of a sum? That's not a big sum nowadays. I'm going to tell you what it's equal to. Back in the 1950s, it would be equal, or even the 1970s, it would be equal to going in wanting to withdraw $1,000. Stuff like this just gets me. Okay, it's minutiae. It's, it's not really nothing big. But stuff like nowadays, you know, you go in and you want to buy some gas or something, and you got, all you got is a $100 bill. Sometimes at the gas stations, they won't take it. But heck, you can barely buy a bar. By back, I understand back in the old days, you know, when money was money and the guy hauled out a hundred, but now that's only like ten bucks and they can't change it. And if you don't believe it's only like ten bucks, just think gas used to be 25 cents a gallon. How much gas could you buy for ten bucks? <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, you could buy 20 gallons of gas. Am I figuring the math right on that? Anyway, now how much can you buy for 100 now, gas? Uh, yeah, uh, let, me, let me think for a second. You know, in the United States, it's what, 325 a gallon or something? Or 350 a gallon? You know, so... Yeah, <laughs> you could still buy. You could still for a hundred. You could you can buy. You could buy your your twenty gallons. But but you got to understand something. Back then it, it was a lot cheaper. Now it's. Well, how am I getting sidetracked off on this? I'm like a I'm like a car that just went off into the pits. And they're pulling all the wheels off of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, I gotta get back on track. Anyway, the Fed's making a very significant error here, and it's gonna be proven pretty darn soon because the bond market's starting to really react now. We saw that yesterday. Uh, let's take a look at some other news here. What is this story here ahead? Uh, news Nation. Uh, 
Texas Governor Greg Abbott, he's declared that there's an invasion at the southern border. Says Texas Governor Greg Abbott declared an invasion at the southern border on Wednesday evening, deploying the Texas National Guard and the Texas Department of Public Safety and local law enforcement agencies. Because there's an invasion at the border, he says. Uh, it says, uh, along with uh, Abbott attached a letter sent to President Joe Biden last November. In the letter, Abbott urges the federal government is not upholding its end of the constitutional agreement to individual states to protect uh, each of them against invasion. <laughs> That's what uh, it says there. Uh, let's take a look at this article here. Now, this could be a huge problem for people who are who have relatives and stuff in India, you know, and 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 things, and and maybe they want to visit there to visit their relatives, you know, and stuff like that. It says India has suspended the visas for Canadians, and is denouncing it as a terrorist safe haven. India and Canada has now, uh, this row between them has continued escalating. India having suspended visa services for all Canadian nationals on Thursday. A statement said the temporary move is a result of security threats against Indian consulates in India while denouncing Canada as a terrorist safe haven. How come, going back to 9-11, whenever governments want to impose a heavy hand, they always label the people that they don't like as they use that term, that derogatory term right there, T-E-R-R-I-R-O-S-T. I spell that right? <laughs> How come they started doing that, 9-11, and they've continued to do that? I'm a Canadian, and, and I consider that to be a derogatory term. Just like there's other derogatory terms I, that I will not mention, probably one of the most famous over in our country. I, I'm not even going to go there on this channel, you know. But... Just certain words that you shouldn't be shouldn't be used because they are used as a drug as as a tool. They're like a crowbar. These words. And that's a crowbar word. It's used as a crowbar to to get what you want. If you're a politician, you just label the group or whatever or whoever it is. You label them all terrorists, and then you can you've dehumanized them. And then at that point doesn't matter whether they are or they're not. That doesn't matter. That's not why the tool's being used. The word is being used as a tool to dehumanize. This was a technique, you know, that was started in Germany back during World War II. By a group, another group whose word shall remain anonymous. I won't want to say who they are. But they effectively un understood how powerful that can be to use certain words to dehumanize people by calling them something. You call them something that maybe they're not. It doesn't really matter whether they are or they're not. It's the word that they're using to dehumanize so that then they can be take advantage of that group or whoever it is. It's not right. It's something that is... is it's almost like... You know, these little kids in preschool, they run around yelling, You got the cooties! You got the cooties! They're using that word cooties as a dehumanizing word, you know? And, and oftentimes it can lead to bullying. Well, this is just a bigger version of that. I mean, when are we going to learn as a species to start getting past all of these infantile things that we do and start to act like an adult species so that we so that perhaps if there are other species out there perhaps that they'll accept us in if we're not a bunch of juvenile delinquents 
Anyway, I'm off on a tear again. Uh, I got to get back on track. Uh, we got more news. Uh, shutdown looms as warring House Republicans leave town. Less than 10 days to go before the United States government shuts down spending efforts by Congressional Republicans has failed for a second time this week. In a sign of discord in his party ranks, U.S. House Representative Speaker Kevin McCarthy said, this is what he said, some just want to burn the whole place down. Perhaps it's the COVID again in their brains. You know, I mean, that sounds silly, but don't dismiss it so quickly. There's certain things that can happen inside a person's brain. You know, I've heard that uh, there's been like uh, people in the past that that they become very aggressive. Some people, if they have like a brain tumor or something, you know, and uh, it can push on certain parts of the brain that, that can cause aggression. I don't know. I'm just fishing here. I mean, I do know that we're we're diseased now. And so are the animals. Things like the deer population, things like that. And animal populations. Now we got a storm heading toward the east coast. It's barreling toward the east coast. It's a tropical storm. Landfall forecasts in North Carolina. And it's abs absolutely going to cause a lot of wet, I think, or a lot of rain and stuff. There's a storm moving closer to the U.S. East Coast will deliver tropical storm conditions in North Carolina on Friday, the National Hurricane Center and says. It's packing winds 50 miles an hour, and it's probably worse by now. I haven't checked in with the Hurricane Center yet. This was, this was a little while ago. It's moving 14 miles an hour, and it's about 325 miles away from south uh, south, south of Cape Hatteras. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the markets. Taking a look at the silver price today, it's up 14 cents on the day so far, 23.52. Gold, gold is up five dollars and twenty cents at 19.24. That was a very good year. Oh, if we were back in the 1920s. They called it the Roaring Twenties, you know. Everybody was prosperous. It was a good time had by all. Very progressive 10 years as well. The 10 years between 1920 and 1929. And it all fell apart in 1929. Why? The damn Fed again. They screwed up our prosperity. They always screwing everything up for us. When can we get rid of that stupid central bank? They're they're basically what they're doing is is they're very slowly but surely going to make every single person in, in in the world homeless. That's that's their goal, I guess. I don't know. Uh, taking a look at Bitcoin and the cryptos now. Uh, Bitcoin is at 26624 Ethereum is at 1591 And XRP is at 51.1 cents. Taking a look at the Dow Jones. It's up today. I'm going to refresh the page. Up 55 points at 34,126. Taking a look at crude oil. Now, you know what? I was right. Remember I told you guys that it would rush up to 90 and it'd hang around 90? That's what it's doing. And it'll hang around. If I'm right, it'll hang around here for a little while. I don't know, maybe a few weeks. And then it'll rush up to 100. So it's at 89.46 right now. Taking a look at bonds and rates today, and we're seeing falling yields on the long end, but it's not falling as far as it rose the other day. U.S. 10 years at 4.43, it's fell 4.8 basis points. And the 30 years at 4.52, and it's fell 2.9 basis points. And finishing off with the dollar index, 
is at 105.5 and the dollar's going sideways today maybe slightly up thank you guys for listening to my show have a great afternoon guys we'll catch you guys in the next episode bye bye